So last year I was able to get started on research um, and I basically just kind of collected some background information on the non-aligned movement uh, regarding its origins, um, kind of documenting it um, and analyzing it from a uh, like international relations theory standpoint of um, like realism and constructivism specifically. And I kind of related how the how the movement acted in like realist functions versus constructivist functions, um, its relevancy, uh, just uh, things of that nature. And then as the semester finished and over the summer and into this semester, um, I've been working with Dr. Portada in trying to narrow the focus of the research down and kind of really develop some uh, specific questions that I want to answer and have some new findings that I kind of want to create organically. I know um, some themes I'm trying to touch on now are uh, like hegemony, uh, still realism and constructivism, um, areas of international law that the non-alignment movement has been able to affect. Um, and I kind of want to narrow my focus into the Latin American region. And I just have ideas floating around of um, you know, like realism and constructivism are uh, sectors of international relations theory that uh, are heavily studied within like the great powers, like the Western nations, uh, China, Russia, United States as well. Um, so I'm trying to find uh, different connections to that in more of the global South region, specifically in Latin America, to see if the theory can still smoothly apply in these states or if there are nuances specific to uh, Latin American regions. Um, I also think concepts of like hegemony are very interesting, uh, specifically in relation to like the UN and the international law. That's kind of some reoccurring themes I've been seeing throughout the research I've been continuing now uh, with the non-alignment movement and how the movement has either been able to act as a force for changing international law or not and seeing its effectiveness there, um, as well as the non-alignment movement sort of acting as this like arbiter and mediator of either the great powers in their conflicts or in if not directly then indirectly shaping international law so i know that um the timeline dr Portado and i have established i'm going to narrow this focus by uh the fall semester of this year so when the semester ends um we hope to have a good question to go to go off of and to kind of really hone in that focus so i can like get going with like the specifics of my research. Um, in addition to uh, next semester, I have a formal independent study with Dr. Portada, and that's gonna be a lot of like the nitty gritty details coming up with conclusions of my own and then hopefully refining something to present at the 84th annual uh, Pennsylvania Political Science Association conference. It's kind of a mouthful, but I'm hoping to be able to represent my work there at that conference, maybe even find other conferences to present my work at, but especially for uh, this conference and that I've already presented there and being able to have um, not like a sequel to my research, but being able to have my research updated and being able to have comparisons of like, hey, this is what I did last year. Uh, twofold, look at where my research is now and look at the discussions I'm having now. Um, and relating the two. Um, and I think that's something that's super cool and really exciting. I think one of the main things I'm trying to find is that there's a lot of traditional like political theory that relates to um, Western powers and how the great powers interact with one another and how dominant they are in the international sphere. But I think it'd be really interesting to see how effective the non-alignment movement has been and how it could potentially be effective um, in the international community, however that may be, and being able to kind of see if international relations doesn't always have to be dominated by great power politics and that if there can be like independent thought and even like neutral thought kind of through the non-alignment movement in that body, um, and being able to find that and kind of deviate from always being tied back to the great powers um, because they have so much influence in the international world. Um, but at the same time, like it doesn't always have to be about like the great powers and kind of being able to find um, those nuances and even, uh, even trying to challenge like conventional political theory and being able to see um, if that is always applicable. I think if I could, um, find either just like cracks or 
um, just deviations in traditional political theory um, through the non-aligned movement and being able to find those uh, would be really interesting. And that is something I hope to accomplish. Um, if not like creating, not like creating my own framework, but being able to like find specific nuances that are important enough to make distinctions and be able to like account for like, hey, like this isn't always how things have to work. They can work in X, Y, Z ways and through these examples and through these um, different occurrences and trying to find patterns um, and trying to establish like a deviation from traditional like theoretical frameworks in international relations.